Hi everyone, this is Abs. He's a sprinter at Loughborough University and he has a couple of mobility and stability issues which are limiting the quality of his squat. So here we have Abs at the bottom of his squat. The main issue for me is that there seems to be a slight shift of his body towards the right hand side which is potentially causing a few asymmetries between sides. Starting at his feet, we can see the right foot is a little bit more externally rotated than the left. The right knee appears to be a little bit further down than the left, as is his right elbow compared to the left and even the bar. So my initial thoughts are that there will be some imbalances in mobility or stability across sides, which is causing abs to squat as he does here. And looking at abs to squat from the side, you can see there's an ever so slight heel raise, suggesting tightness of the soleus, forward trunk lean, and the depth isn't quite that deep. To try and find out why Ab squats as he does, I took him through a series of overhead squat assessments. In the flat footed condition, Abs was displaying the same asymmetries as with his barbell squat. But when we went heels raised, Abs was able to get a lot deeper into the squat position. So this tells us that tightness in his soleus or ankle mobility were limiting factors to the squat depth at least. Also, being heels raised, it's helped with Abs's foot alignment at the bottom here, the right foot no longer externally rotated. However, being in this position hasn't helped Abs's hip shift, so that must mean it's stemming from something other than the ankle. And lastly, even though being in this heels raised position helped with Abs's external rotation, from the back we can see that there's still some overpronation going on at the joint here. And this overpronation is probably what was causing Abs's external rotation in the flat footed condition. And finally, to try and understand resting muscle lengths and muscle tightness, I took Abs through a Thomas test. The results of this show that there's slightly more tightness in the right rec femme compared to the left. Here on the left, there's an angle of around 120 degrees, and on the right, 130 degrees. This could explain the hip shift that abs displays during his squat. It could be a cause or an effect of that. With him favoring his right side, it would be expected that there's a little bit more tension and a little bit more activity in the right quadriceps muscles, which is perhaps why there's a slight decreased range of motion and a little bit more tightness during rest. So to conclude, from these assessments at least, we can say that soleus tightness or ankle mobility were a limiting factor to Abs' squat depth and tightness in that rec fem was perhaps a cause or an effect to the dominance that Abs was showing towards his right side with that lateral hip shift. And this is Chris. Chris is also a sprinter at Loughborough University and he has a couple of skill components which, if corrected, could improve the quality of his squat. On the whole, Chris is quite a skillful squatter. Um, he demonstrates a good setup with his feet just wider than shoulder width apart, he's tracking slightly externally, his knees following the line of his toes and he reaches a depth lower than 90 degrees. Here we can see that his hips break evenly with his knees, his knees reach beyond his toes and his hips raise at the same tempo as the bar. And likewise he performs a bodyweight overhead squat assessment in the same way too. However, that being said, he also demonstrates a couple of areas to improve. Um, firstly, Chris adopts a forward lean balancing strategy and also there is a degree of tucking evident in both conditions, both of which could be related. This forward lean will be a strategy to maintain his centre of mass over his base of support. It could be because he simply has long legs or that he has a hip dominant strategy as seen in the moment arms on this side. Also, it could be because he has overactive psoas groups and underactive spinal extensors. Adopting anterior knee translation can help to minimise forward lean, but as we can see here, Chris already performs his squats in this way. With this strategy in place and with the forward lean still present, the cause could point towards weak spinal extensors, as these will be a contributing factor to the tucking that we can see too. So, strengthening the extensors to minimise tucking could be of importance from an injury prevention perspective. This too could reduce the trunk lean. 
However, it should be kept in mind that the trunkline could be anatomical with his long legs or that it is related to his hip dominant strategy, which for Chris being a sprinter, you could argue that posterior chain strengthening is more beneficial for his 100 to 200 meter events. And back to abs for our second lift, which is a power clean from a hanging position. Uh, this is a lift that he has performed a couple of seasons ago, but one which he won't mind me saying is um, not one of his most skillful gym exercises. I'll start at the most evident error, in my opinion, and then work into a couple more finer technical points. But for me, um, he's over reliant on the use of his arms to lift the bar. We can see this with the amount of elbow flexion there is early on in the lift. So frame by frame, the bar is coming just towards the knees now and the elbows are already flexing, meaning he's using his upper body to pull the bar up rather than the power of his legs. So this upper body strength plus the forceful triple extension of the legs means that the bar comes up incredibly high. If we look at Abs's start position, which would be the end of the first pull in a full clean, ideally Abs would have his shoulders further forwards over the bar more in line with the green line rather than the red and his hips shifted further backwards creating a bit more pretension in the hip extensors. If we watch here from this angle on repeat we can see that Abs's technique is similar to that of someone who has a one pull technique from the floor whereby there's a large effort to triple extend the hip knee and ankle from below the knee. Without a transition into a second pull, it means that abs is not lifting from the most optimum position biomechanically. So he won't be able to lift as heavy, which would decrease the amount of force expressed per lift and perhaps the amount of force he is able to express on the track. And lastly, back to abs's over-reliance of his upper body to pull the bar up, I've tried to constrain him from doing this by adding an additional 20 kilograms to the bar. The thinking behind this is that with the heavier weight, his upper body won't be able to pull the bar up. So he would have to rely more on his legs to generate the force to lift the bar up, which all in all would be a bit more beneficial for abs and his sprinting. The coaching cues I gave here were to start with the bar no lower than the knees and to keep the arms as long as possible. But as we can see, it's still far from perfect, but it does look a lot better and I also think Abs is a bit happy with his technique as well. And the last athlete we have is Tom. Uh, Tom is also a fitness coach at Liverpool Football Club and he enjoys weightlifting as part of his personal training. Tom is quite an experienced Olympic lifter and I think that's reflected in the consistency of his quality throughout these reps. There's a nice hinge to lower the bar, a patient pull until that violent triple extension and a good deep catching position. One aspect which could be improved is his elbows during the catch, where ideally we'd like to see them higher up and further forwards with his triceps parallel to the ground. It is common for a lack of shoulder mobility to restrict this movement, in particular shoulder flexion and external rotation. To assess both, Tom performed simple range of motion tests. Here he is testing shoulder flexion and here shoulder external rotation. From these, we can see that Tom lacks full shoulder flexion on the right hand side here, but does have good shoulder external rotation on the left. Potential areas of tightness limiting this motion could be muscles that attach around the lesser tuberosity of the humerus, being the lats, teres major and subscaps. In a quick attempt to increase range in this area, I performed a soft tissue release technique in and around the attachment site followed by Tom holding some static lat stretches to allow the muscle to relax and lengthen further. These quick interventions help to increase Tom's capacity to flex at the shoulders, although you could argue that there's a slight degree of spinal extension causing the ribs to flare up a little bit to get that extra range. But on the whole, there is an improvement post-intervention compared to pre-intervention. The new shoulder range was then utilised to catch the bar with a more textbook and comfortable technique. The elbows were able to get higher, leaving the triceps close to parallel to the ground. With a greater capacity to flex at the shoulder, Tom will be more likely to be comfortable catching heavier weights 
as the increased range would decrease the amount of strain put through his wrists, which would have had to extend to a greater degree to make up for the lack of shoulder range.